Hello, my name is Vera, and I'm a robot. And what's your name? Hi, my name is Jason Bellini. This is Vera, a robot that does job interviews. What are the three top important tips for a salesperson? She's done 10,000 of them and counting. Congratulations. We chose you as one of the best candidates for a sales representative. What looks like the future is already a reality. Hiring is undergoing a revolution. Almost all Fortune 500 companies now use some form of automation. She keeps winking at me and then rolling her eyes at me. But many companies are also trying to look under the hood of job applicants and assess them in completely new ways. You're quantifying human behavior, human expressions, human voices, turning that into data. We're now using artificial intelligence to help companies find the very best talent. And most likely you are being analyzed by an algorithm. How does that make you feel? I feel like that would blindside me entirely. Experts call the proliferation of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science tools the Wild West of hiring. Critics, and even some hiring managers themselves, say they're concerned about these tools' potential for bias. They raise issues like fairness, transparency, and accuracy. So has the government taken a look at these algorithms to figure out whether they are within the law? Not yet. Thank you for an interesting dialogue. Have a nice day. Thanks. You have a nice day, too, wherever you are. Fingers crossed. We begin our exploration of the new world of hiring with a visit to the headquarters of one of the companies that's pushing the envelope, HireVue. Its artificial intelligence assessment tool is used by over 50 companies, including Unilever and Hilton, which both declined to comment. This, I'm told, is a typical digital interview for someone applying to become a customer service rep. It confronts me with several scenarios that, on the job, I might encounter. If you can't help me resolve this right now, I'm going to take my business elsewhere. I'm here to try to make things better. I go into this knowing something that HireVue acknowledges many job candidates potentially do not. That my responses are being assessed not by human beings, but by AI, analyzing my tone of voice, the clusters of words I use, and my micro-expressions. So here's what's wild to me. The notion of micro-expressions, is that what you're calling them? It's the, the facial analysis software. It's capturing, if you think of facial movement, smiling, you know, um, frowning, eyebrow movement. Those are actual database points, and they roll together to give certain emotions and traits and personality and thinking style things. Here I am. Yeah. I just did the interview for a job as a customer support representative. How'd I do? The first thing is we look at the AI score that's attached to it. And you can see that up here, you scored at a 37%. That's pretty good, right? No. Um, that's out of 100. Right. So you're kind of in the bottom third, if you will, in that job. So you'd be a low match, essentially. My rating is the result of HireVue's AI comparing my responses to those of actual employees. Essentially, my performance is being compared, my voice, my words, my facial expressions, against a company's highest performers. So you think if an employer were to see that number, would I be written off most likely? Would it be filtered out of the process completely? No, no, absolutely not, actually. What we would recommend is that the candidates could be rank ordered by that, and, but they, and they still go and look at the different videos. So you're telling me that everybody who goes through this, they get seen by someone can be they want to watch all the videos but they might decide hey this guy jason only has 37 percent not even worth our time if you score so low they might say we may not watch all the videos but they may watch a question they all confer right. with that score and then move on we came here to chicago to meet a young man just graduated from college who is not a huge fan of video interviews. Alex Wong graduated in May from the University of Illinois. He sent out more than 30 job applications before he landed this position as a junior credit analyst at a local bank on the south side of Chicago. And for how many of those 30 did you have to do video interviews? I would say around 10 of them. 
about half of them were administered on Higher View's platform. Were you not getting follow-up interviews after you did these online interviews? To be honest, uh, after all of them, essentially, um, I never really went past the first round. It, it didn't provide me the opportunity to actually show who I really am. Wang believes it wasn't his education or work experience, but the video interview format that caused him not to advance. He doesn't know which companies might have applied AI analysis. The place where Wang eventually got a job does all of its interviews in person. I'm old fashioned, I guess. Well, I want to see the people, I want to ask my questions, I want to look at them in the eye. Not to put you on the spot, but how's he doing? Let's do a little job review right now. My 30 years of uh, doing this, he's probably one of the top three or four or five kids who come through here. How about that? Good for you. Yeah, he's done very well. Kevin Parker is HireVue's CEO. He says that his platform removes human bias from the hiring process. We're providing a very fair and very level playing field for people to really shine. Can you imagine why some people might be a little upset when it doesn't work out for them? Sure. But let's let's look at what the alternative is. And you know, I think in a in a process that we have today, it sort of has this illusion of validity. People get weeded out all the time from hiring process. Ifoma Ajunwa is a sociology and law professor at Cornell University. She's researching the societal implications of platforms like HireViews. When you think about automated hiring, the impact is far higher than any one potentially biased human manager. And that's why she says experts should take a closer look inside these algorithmic black boxes. Microexpressions, is it really science? It's still, frankly, developing science because the important thing is there's no clear established pattern of what facial expression is needed for any job. So applicants could be eliminated for facial expressions that have nothing to do with the job. HireVue sees the challenge differently. The company says that only the data points that are relevant in predicting what matters are really considered, and that their model attempts to capture all different facial expressions that have been seen in top performers. What about an AI review of the way we express ourselves on social media? Could that be a window into our compatibility for a job? And you know, with DeepSense, essentially what we build is build this meta profile, you know, a behavioral profile of every individual. Amar Preet Kalkat's company is spearheading another trend in hiring, a move away from judging people based on their resumes and skills towards decisions based on people's personalities. His company, DeepSense, uses applicants' Twitter, LinkedIn, and other social media accounts to do more than just check for questionable behavior. DeepSense says that it runs scientifically-based tests to surface people's underlying personality traits. I'm just a little skeptical that from a Twitter feed, you can determine my personality or anyone. It's not perfect, but now let's remember, everything is relative. And you don't need to tell people. This is public data. Is it legal? Well, that is all public information, so yes, it is perfectly legal. Is it ethical? So that's the second question. When you're posting on Twitter, you're certainly not imagining that that information is being collected to be used against you. So what's Deep Sense's sense of who I am? So Jason Bellini is a person who can be a little anxious sometimes. Yeah. He likes to face challenges up front, that's true. To test DeepSense's tool, I actually did one of the personality tests. It's the one that DeepSense used in its own benchmark testing. My results on DeepSense were similar in two of the four categories, but in two others, the discrepancy is pretty wide. I just wonder how companies are gonna be confident that it's a real reflection of that person's personality. So I know that most of the times it's telling me the right thing. Calcat says two Fortune 500 companies are already using DeepSense. Can you tell me which companies they are? I, I can't tell the companies. I can tell you one of them is a consulting, one of the big five consulting ones. Okay. They don't so, want people to know that they're using your service? It's still experimental for a lot of people. Not a lot of transparency. At this, the dawn of AI assessing job candidates. We, the public, can't see what's in the black box nor, in most cases, do we know when it's analyzing us. And it's important, actually, that we really stop to ask, is this working for society?